Hello, so we're now at the Q&A session. Um, but we, before we start um, with, with the discussion, first I wanted to, to thank Liz and, and, and Lydia uh, for that presentation. Um, but Lydia has also posted some uh, questions on Mentimeter. So let me see, yes, I can, I, I can now click again. So um, I think we're going to reflect on, on um, whether the, 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 the answers which were there, um, but then we'll have uh, also a, a discussion and, and a chat about the Q&A questions um, that, will, that, that, that were posted through the Q&A. So um, Lydia, um, can you share your screen? Great, thanks, Christelle. Is that working now? Can you see it okay? It is, thank you. Brilliant, okay. So this, this was the uh, answers that came in, in from the first, first question. So what excites you about the new version of GlowFast and how will it improve your work? So I'm seeing lots of, lots of um, things pop in about uh, the Red Cross National Societies, increasing confidence in communicating flood risk information. Um, maybe some of our panelists want to reflect on what they're seeing. So I'm just wondering, uh, Lise, Peter, I mean, uh, if probably it would be kind of uh, Lise, who's a, who's a direct user of, of GlowFast, what, uh, you've already made a presentation about the GlowFast use, but uh, when they're kind of new versions like that, how, how do you see it, it can help you to, to develop things? Yeah, good question. I think the, the first thing that a, a new version uh, sort of does is strike panic in us because we have to think about reevaluating it all over again. Um, there's obviously always opportunity um, for seeing improvements in the forecast model. So that, that's really exciting. Um, we get a lot of demands to use forecasts in locations where we're sort of think that GLOFAS has very marginal skill. And there's been situations recently where we've been able to just approve the early action protocols, for example, in the Philippines, which are relatively small catchments. Um, and so every, every improvement to, to the model can help us in some way, perhaps with providing longer lead times, like we've seen in, on the Brahmaputra River, um, being able to include more locations, which means that we can reach more vulnerable communities or start to even um, start using GLOFAS in countries where there are, are smaller basins that previously we might not have really thought about applying GLOFAS to. So I think there's a sort of excitement and fear as well. <laughs> yes, yeah, which I, I'm not surprised. I mean, any change is always kind of associated with some sort of risk and then, and then uh, kind of adaptation, isn't it? And just understanding those differences, which is which is quite important. Um, maybe I will I, I will um, I will ask you before asking a question uh, related to that to Peter. I just wondered um, whether you you could comment on um, this uh, this effort we've made to to uh, facilitate the migration with running in parallel um, both the pre-operational system or GLOFAS 3.1 as pre-operational and then 2.1 as a legacy system for, for a few months. Um, this is something that, that ne needed quite a lot of, of uh, investment in terms of computing, infrastructure, re redoing our suite, uh, kind of uh, adapting the web services and the data services. But, but we thought as data providers that it would be really uh, important. Can, can you comment on, on how useful that could be for you? Yeah, well, that, that was really important for us. I mean, first of all, with the two systems running parallel, it gives us a good indication of where we need to start prioritizing our efforts. Um, We've, we've robustly evaluated those forecasts. We know that things change when there's a new model version. And we also know that a lot of people in countries are then relying on it to be able to take action. And we don't want to lose credibility if, if, if something changes. So for example, in Uganda, um, with that increase in the, in the sort of model climatology for flows, 
we could have ended up triggering very frequently on the basis of those forecasts. Um, so we needed to be very careful about that and then prioritize for Uganda um, actually evaluating those forecasts quite quickly. Um, yeah. Also, in terms of the timing, the release date of, of now would have been quite scary for us in Bangladesh because this is the start of the monsoon season. Um, so obviously the evaluation takes time. So being able to undertake that evaluation earlier with a bit of overlap and being able to see those forecasts side by side has been really important for us. Excellent. Uh, and uh, um, what I want to say is we, we've, uh, we've actually run GLOFAS 3.1 in a kind of real mode forecast from the beginning of 2020. And you, you can access that data through the CDS. You can access that through the web, inter the state, the, the web interface. And that might help you looking at those particular seasons um, that are uh, flooding season, but, but um, kind of from last year retrospectively. Um, and before passing uh, to Peter, the, the, the talk to Peter, I want to also mention that if you got any feedbacks, if you got any case studies that you've conducted on 3.1, it would be great if you could share it with us. You could, would be great if you could share it with the community. Please get in touch with us through the, uh, the GLOFAS contact us web interface. And if you agree, we would post those case studies through the wiki or the web interface so then more people can, can benefit. Uh, now, Peter, I'm just wondering whether you, you've got a comment about a kind of smaller rivers and, and whether we could have more points, which uh, kind of ha how, what's the next um, phase of GLOFAS improvement after 3.1? Yes, um, thanks, Christelle. Indeed, I I have I have a comment on that, but let me maybe uh, also first really um, highlight the fact that um, you know the the the, the close interaction uh, with the users that we have, and especially here as a as a as a, an example. The, yes, um, thanks, Christelle. Indeed, I I have I have a comment on that, but let me maybe uh, also first really um, highlight the fact that um, you know the. The, the the close interaction uh, with the users that we have, and especially here as a as a as a, an example, the uh, the colleagues at the Red Cross from the anticipatory hub is is really fundamental for us for further improving uh, the system. But I mean, there's actually there's actually quite a, a number of more users, and I'm looking just at the at the uh, some of the response of of the padlets there. And um, and uh, yes, um, for example, there's an office on duty from the RS Total project. So, uh, for those that don't know that, this is really a project that tries to support, uh, let's say, the emergency response center of Euro of the European Union when it comes to coordinating help uh, that comes from Europe at in, when it, for large scale flood disasters all around the world. So it's really for, for us. It's really we, we have we try to accommodate all the user requests, a wide range of user requests. And as you know, sometimes this, this is really uh, not an easy not an easy thing to do. But I think what is really unique about also about the release of Glofas 3.1 is that we are trying to be totally open and transparent. Um, we know this is a global model. We know that global models have their limitations. Um, so I'm, I'm, uh, um, I'm, I think it's a good step into the right direction to be totally transparent and also to make sure that uh, we, um, you know, we enable people and users to, to further improve the system. Now, with regards to the um, to the uh, the river sizes and and whether whether where we go next. So yes, I mean. It was already mentioned that uh, Philipp, the example of Philippines, which are obviously in a very small catchments um, and which in the current 0.1 degree resolution that GLOFAS has is of course difficult uh, to, to simulate and, 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 and influences also the quality of the forecast. But uh, we are working um, to in as a next, as I mentioned already at the beginning, already at a, as, a, as a next evolution on increasing the spatial resolution of uh, of GLOFAS um, to also be able to better um, um, capture uh, flood events or forecast flood events that will occur in these uh, in these river basins. So again, also here I, I saw a number of comments on 
um, uh, on, on sharing data with us because yes, it is obviously for us very crucial to calibrate the model and, uh, and, and, and compare with observations. So this is a call actually out to all the ones that are here connected. Uh, is, is if you have observed uh, data discharge data that we can use in the next round of, uh, of, of improving GLOFAS, uh, please contact us and, and um, we are looking forward to really uh, make sure that we also try and, and improve the system uh, for, for your region. So I'll, I'll give back to you, Christelle. Thank you, thank you. And I, I can see quite a lot of, of, uh, of comments, it's great comments in, on Mentimeter kind of about how GLOFAS is used in practice and, and, and some more questions. It's great that, that you, you even want to have more. So I, I can hear, uh, I, I can see some questions about, you know, um, more information about developing countries, um, some, some, uh, uh, some areas which are Perhaps uh, there is less information on GLOFAS. So as, as we've mentioned, Peter repeated it, you know, for, for regions with smaller rivers, um, at the moment we, we are not able to, to we, we do not provide forecasts because our, our simply our hydrological modeling system is not is not designed for that. But part of the future, we um, we, we are aiming to uh, increase the spatial resolution of GLOFAS in the next few years, and that should enable us to better simulate smaller rivers. Um, but Peter said it as said it as well. It is uh, you know with with hydrological simulation and and hydrological model calibration having um, the observations to to be able to calibrate our models on those river systems is quite important um, to improve the modeling performance. So bear with us, we, we, we continue improving. Uh, remember it's a global system, which is, uh, which is meant to be complementary to local information, um, but, but we, 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 we try to, to really improve things. So, I'm just wondering whether Lise could comment about more, uh, you know, you, you mentioned Lise, uh, where the Red Cross is working, kind of, you, you mentioned Uganda several times with, with the examples. Um, you know, what, what is the benefit really for, for other applications, for example, uh, developing countries or, or, or um, national organizations? Uh, is, is there any opportunity for, for them to use GLOFAS? Yeah, I think um, it, it depends on, on the country and what systems are uh, already in place. So the important thing is that GLOFAS should not be replacing the, the national capacity in a country, but it, it, but it can provide an interim solution where there isn't any capacity. I think also when it comes, you know, maybe not activities like evacuation, but when it comes to sort of preparedness actions that take slightly longer, um, obvious one might be like pre-positioning aid or something like that we need a forecast with a longer lead time and so often the forecasts in country are not suitable for that um, and that's because to, to forecast with longer lead times we really need to have that ensemble rainfall forecast that gets driven through the the hydrological model as well so that's where the opportunity lies um, I think what's really important is to have um, a working relationship between the, the GLOFAS developers um, and between the, the National Hydromet Services so that you can work together to bring the forecasts in, um, maybe undertake some training and understand what each other's needs are so that we can work together to improve GLOFAS and to make it more relevant for those local users. So, for example, in Bangladesh, um, we understand from the flood forecasting and warning center that it's, it's not just the magnitude of the flood that is important to forecast, it's also the duration of the flood. And that's information that GLOFAS can provide but can't be provided from a five-day forecast because the, the duration of floods can be sort of 20 days or, or more. Um, so we can really start to understand what are the, the sort of forecast demands from the National Hydromet Services and start thinking about how we develop GLOFAS to meet those kind of requirements as well. I'd say on, on top of that, what we've seen, um, not within the Red Cross Red Crescent movement, but from the FCDO, the Foreign and Com Commonwealth and Development Office in the UK, is we're being asked at the University of Reading with partners uh, with Bristol, 
um, and HR Wallingford to provide flood forecasts um, from tropical cyclones. Um, and from that side of things, it's really important to be able to link up with impact data in country to be able to provide actionable information. But also in some cases, we find that GLOFAST isn't quite suitable for us because GLOFAST currently has this daily time step and the daily update. And we know that tropical cyclone forecasts can change quite rapidly. So a, a, change, in, a change in track to the, to the storm or a change in the uncertainty can have a very swift effect on the areas that are at risk from flooding that might not be captured by GLOFAST. So that's one of the developments we might like to see in, in the future is perhaps to have a GLOFAST forecast that get updated more frequently, like a, twice a day, for example. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you, Lise. Um, yes, I mean, it's, it's, it's always, you know, we, we've discussed um, increase in spatial resolution here. You're talking about increase in the number of frequency of, of, of forecast. This is brilliant. It is, of course, we we need to to weigh the cost benefit analysis, in particular, the kind of the, the, the computational demand and and the data volume that would be provided uh, needed. But but it's 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 excellent to have that feedback because it's exactly what what we need to know what what would be more useful and. Um, and, and I think in, in the in the next phase of Glowfast, I'm sure that um, um, you know discussion, uh, engagement, outreach, interaction with, with users will, will, will continue uh, be made. Remember, GLOFAS became only operational in 2018. So it, it, it's quite a relatively young system and, and uh, we've got a, a set of users and, and, and we had a number um, of uh, uh, of workshops already, uh, but but I'm sure we will continue this interaction uh, and and uh, with this idea of of co-developing, understanding the user needs, uh, providing training. I hope that uh, you know our, our introduction of the wiki uh, and sharing hopefully some some YouTube vine video as training material will be uh, will be um, a step in that right direction. Um, I'm wondering, uh, Peter, whether you want to comment about this, how, how um, was the vision for having this interaction and co-development with, with users? Yes, sure. Um, I mean, as, as I said before already, I mean, for, for, for us, um, having a, a close interaction with, uh, with, with possible, with potential users, um, is is absolutely fundamental, and um, it it makes it makes uh, it is a great benefit for us because uh, you know otherwise we all sit and we all like to model things and and work on uh, on on providing a nice skill scores or not on whatever. Uh, but I think the the use case that was shown by Liz here. Uh, really, really uh, explains a little bit more that we go much. We need to go much further than, than just a skill score metrics. Um, so I, I think this is something we we will definitely have uh, in uh, improve in the in the future. Um, we will try and have uh, annual um, Glofas user meetings uh, for sure. And I, I also know that this webinar is kind of the first one that. Uh, we are doing here. So this is really something that uh, I think, looking also at the, at the response from all of you, is something that we will uh, we will continue doing and we'll have more frequent uh, webinars on all kinds of different aspects of GLOFAS. Uh, and, and something where we really also made a big effort in is to really be able to respond to all different user needs. I mean, we are, we are talking here, Gliss showed the example where they really took the data, the raw data and did an, a scientific analysis and to really come to, a, to an optimum decision-making uh, workflow. Um, but you have to imagine there's also users in Glofas. I, I saw somebody mentioned uh, um, uh, the word food program here. I mentioned the emergency response uh, center of the European uh, Commission. Uh, that are more looking at, let's say, at the visual. Uh, uh, they try to interpret the, interpret the forecast using uh, using the web interface, the map viewer. So I think this is also really something that um, we we will we will continue fostering and we will put, continue putting a lot of effort in that we we try to cover all. 
uh, uh, user needs. And uh, yeah, for the future, the only thing I can say, there will be expect to have uh, more um, uh, webinars and, and more meetings. And uh, again, as I, I think I mentioned this before as well, um, something that we're really trying to strive is, is to make the, comp the system as transparent as possible. So uh, I'm, one example also that was mentioned in the slide is, is the hydrologic model in the background is actually also open source. So if, if somebody really wants to try and dig into uh, the actual modeling, um, you know, he, he or she can do that as well. So I, I yeah, this is a, definitely an, an, an effort that we continue and, and we will we will try to improve even uh, even further. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you very much. I think this is this is uh, it, it's already uh, time to to finish the, our first session. Um, so thank you very much, Peter. Thank you very much, Elise, for for those those comments and and uh, your reaction to to questions. Uh, it's fantastic. Can we have the slides now? Because I can't quite remember what I'm supposed to do. I think I have where uh, thank, thanking everybody, but then uh, next slide. Okay, so um, the first thing is that we, we had uh, a fantastic uh, contribution to the Padlet. Um, so actually, maybe I was wrong to ask to share the slides. Lydia, is there something, can, can you show us the, the Padlet? Here it is. Thank you, everybody, for, for contributing. Very exciting to see all your faces. I hope you can connect and interact with each other after this. Brilliant. So, so the way it works, Lydia, is that we'll, we'll have it uh, closed for editing, but it will be still available for viewing. Is that, is that the way it will work? Yeah, yeah, it will still be open. So yeah, you can you can still access it. Yeah, and if okay. you, you can all edit your, your posts and if you want to add in your contact information, please do that so other people can interact and connect. Brilliant, brilliant. And and that's, that's certainly what it is going to be available through the event page of the Anticipation Hub, but we'll make sure that we will also have a link somewhere in the Glowfast web interface. Um, so, so, so that's brilliant. Thank you very much to, to all of you to, to have to have contributed to this Padlet. Uh, now, can we have the slides back yet? So, uh, so it was kind of what's going to happen next. Um, I mentioned I, I mentioned it already. I mentioned it again. The the wiki page is really a source of information. We've done some some comparison already on 3.1, 2.1. If you've got case studies, uh, kind of the tools, uh, do you want to? You are happy to share. We can post them on, on the wiki. Someone asked uh, in, in, in the chat how to actually get in touch with us. The best way is go to the Glowfast web interface and there is a contact us form. And here, contact us and then we'll get back in touch with you uh, to see whether we can start a fantastic collaboration. So, um, well, this, this is the end of our first session. Um, Peter mentioned it is our first webinar that format. I hope it was it was interesting for you. Um, I know it's not as, as as nice as being face to face, but we try to be uh, as interactive as possible. And really, thank you, Lydia, and the Anticipation Hub to to have it made it so fun with the the Mentimeter and and the Padlet. Um, so. For those who are very familiar with, with uh, Glowfast, maybe um, you, you, you can stop now. What's going to happen is we're going to have another about half an hour uh, of um, demonstration. It's kind of, we've, we've done because we, we were a bit worried about the internet co connection. We've kind of recorded um, how we could interface with the map viewer, but we'll, we'll describe it live. Uh, how to access the different layers, or some of the most important layers of Glowfast through a number of different presentations. And, and at the end, you'll have a presentation about the web and, and data services. That will be recorded as well, and then eventually um, uh, post as YouTube video for, for, uh, to use as training material. We won't have this question and answer uh, uh, during that, that demo session. It's, it's mainly us, but hopefully it still will be useful. 
I'm sure if you've got some more questions to, to ask us, as I said, go to the contact us form. Um, I really want to thank, um, again, where Lee's Peter from the JLC to have contributed and all the colleagues from the JLC to have to have help with making 3.1 happen. Um, you know, our scientists are really excited to engage uh, with practitioners. So, so days like today are, are for us really, really, really important. And we want to carry on being a partner of the anticipation hub. So, um, you know, please explore glow fast, engage with us, um, get in touch with Lydia as well if you've got any other question. And I say thank you very much for those who, and bye-bye for those who leave us now. And then welcome for session two for, for those who stay with us. <laughs>